We're finally taking our cardboard cockpit into its full scale room. But to go big, we first need to go even smaller. Today, we're making the model to be able to cut the full length pieces. <laughs> Welcome to the Creative Geek, where we have makers of games, toys and playful technology to develop their craft by understanding play. For example, through videos about physical game extensions, like this one. Right now I'm making a sci-fi cockpit simulator, and you can follow along and hopefully learn some things along the way. This is a long project, and if you like it, I think you should subscribe, because that way you will be able to follow along in the process. We're closing in on moving from cardboard prototype to the actual full-scale cockpit. But to do that, we first need to make a small-scale model of the full box, so that we know how to cut our final pieces. I'm using Manatarms, as he and I got about the same measurements. Well, actually not at all. But still, here's a 7-inch model, and that means he's about 18 centimeters tall, which is the length of me, 180 centimeters, meaning 10 centimeters is one meter. So when I build, I can measure on the model and find my final measurements quite easy. And he's just flexible enough to sit in the model so that I can have some kind of human to measure on. I plan to build the thing out of pipes, and that means I only have a few angles, because that's the angles I can buy. Mainly 90 degree angles and 45 degree angles. So to build my prototype I'm using uh, a design tool called Fully Frame. It's built for school environments, but I found it very useful for making prototypes as well. It consists of pipes of different lengths, and uh, connectors with different amounts of studs on them. For example, here's a four-sided connector. But I only have 90 degree angles and T-connectors available for me. But these can be cut. So in this case I can cut it down to make a T-connector. And now I can connect these wires on three different sides. The corners I have available is a 45 degree corner, a straight one with a 45 degree on it, a T, meaning a straight one with one going 90 degrees out, and a 90 degree angle. So this is what I need to build it from. I also took some measurements from the prototype and built in cardboard so that I can use them to get the basic measurements done. This is meant to be the controller and uh, these ones. The idea here is that these are available for connecting other things later, probably the walls. The idea here is to plug these two connectors directly into each other. That can be done with the pipes, but it can't really be done here, so I have to mess around a bit. And since this one is only connected to this pipe, it can actually be rotated, meaning I get any angle I want from there. I also need to take my screen into account. And in this case I think I would know which screen I'm going to use, so I can just build something that fits those measurements. I wasn't that happy with this attempt at making the 45 degree corners. I realized this would be wobbly and I could probably not get any stability to it. Uh, and one thing I realized in these cases is it's usually better to use 90 degree angles and, and kind of build the 45 degree angle out of it. So I started messing around with this shape instead. So here you have a 90 degree corner, 90 degree corner, and here you have T corners moving off downwards in a 45 degree angle. And the same thing here on the other side. So that again I have 90 degree corners here. And then I can just extend this shape and for making it into a cube. And this is quite a rigid structure. I could have the front here and the back here, top bottom, everything would look the same. If I decided to do so, I could extend these and make it an elongated shape. These are a bit long, and that's because of this material. In reality, this would be much closer to this edge, making this more into a triangular shape. So I will have main plates, which are square, I will have side plates, and then I have triangular corners. 
This is also a good basic structure because it gives me many points to add extra strengthenings or if I need hangers for something or, or connect connectors. So when I need to hang the screen I can make sure I have a connector here and here to hang it. Some time has passed and I think I overcomplicated things a bit. So I'm gonna try to make things a bit easier for me. I was started looking for other connectors and found a company that could help me. So now I can do more di directions than just the 90 degree angles and T corners. And this is going to help out because it makes the whole construction simpler. And in making it simpler, I believe it's also going to be stronger. Instead of making these advanced corners, I'm just going to make one corner uh, with connectors in all directions. But it means I need a new form of three dimensional connector here. And then I need another type of connector here, here, and here. And finally, I need a cross here, here, and here. This also makes it easier for me to change the measurements afterwards. It's, the mathematics is going to be much easier. So, to begin with, I need a bottom square. And each corner, in all directions, is going to be the 25 centimeters. It's the same here and here and here as well. The width, this one, will be 120 centimeters. And the length, this one, is going to be 140 centimeters. And that means that on the height, this is still going to be 140 centimeters. And this square is going to be 25 by 25. So the only measurement that's missing is this one, which we're going to put to 130. And these are the same measurements as the outer cube that I made before. And from this, it's quite easy to calculate the length between these. It's just 25 plus 25, so minus 50 of this measurement. So that is 80. This is 70. It's 90. And here's the final model. And if you compare this to the previous one, you can see that even though there are more components here, it's actually a more easy construction than this thing. And that's what I wanted to get away from. I also believe this will be more unstable than this. I made a little mistake in size, and this one should actually be the height of this one. So it's going to be a little bit smaller in all directions, but that's easy to cut down and just make it the right one. The simplification will cost me more pipes here since in the previous version there's only one here and here. But if I really need to, I can actually remove this. And that will affect the stability, but it should still work. Similarly, this can be removed to save space. And with that, I can do some balancing once it's actually done to see how much it needs when it's there in full scale. And that means we're almost ready for the full-size project. Check the playlist over here to follow along or go back and see previous things. And also, if you haven't done so already, do subscribe and that way you can follow along in the process and see what is happening.